welcome back everyone we will continue uh, to learn about some important um, insights that that will really help us flow in the prophetic gift in the right way so here is another key thing that is prayer in the spirit and fasting we know that prayer and fasting in general help us consecrate ourselves unto the lord it helps us quiet in our other senses it helps us focus better uh, upon god it helps us strengthen our faith you know uh, the way jesus said this kind shall not go out uh, except by fasting and prayer what he was saying was that it will strengthen us fasting and prayer will give us a stronger faith to be able to accomplish mighty things for god so that's how fasting and prayer help us now we can apply the same thing to the gifts of the spirit as well especially you know prayer is good but especially praying in the spirit something we will notice is that it helps us connect better with the holy spirit when we pray in tongues and not just that but it can also help us calm our emotions it can help us uh, you know uh, manage our feelings uh, also the flesh to to sort of calm down control the flesh and uh, when we reason and have opinions also something something about praying in tongues really helps us in all these areas uh, and so you know that that will enable us to tune in better to god you know when we are tuning in to a radio station what do we want we want to connect properly we don't want any disturbances so praying in the spirit helps us calm down like that so that we can receive you know the signals that that god is sending us and uh, similarly uh, when it comes to fasting so when we fast also we can calm ourselves down and hear better from god so we we can expect whenever we go through a season of prayer go through a season of fasting we can expect some more stirring up and a better flow of the gifts okay worship worship we have um, uh, spoken about this uh, that you know whenever we worship the lord whenever we minister to the lord okay in other words god ministers back to us so acts chapter 13 is a time when the leadership of the antioch church they were ministering to the lord so when they were ministering to the lord god spoke to them and said that okay set apart for me paul and barnabas for the work of the ministry so that helps for us you know uh, to know that okay god will speak when we minister to him and so even during times of worship or seasons of worship we can expect to hear better from god now if i am in the prophetic ministry and i want to he always hear better from god so this must be a part of my life worship prayer fasting and so what happens it's it's like an engine right and it's well lubricated it's able to uh, uh, function in an optimum manner so that way keep ourselves ready for god to speak to us then desire when we read what paul wrote uh, about the gifts of the spirit in first corinthians 12 verse 31 again first corinthians 14 verse 1 verse 13 he uses this terminology earnestly desire earnestly desire the gifts okay so we recognize that desire is also a key to the manifestation of the prophetic gift if i don't have desire then i can quench or i can stop or i can reduce the flow of the spirit but when i seek more when i'm excited full of love and passion for god and the flow of all the gifts of the spirit what will happen i will have you know uh, i can hear from god and i can release it to the people so desire is so important then faith of course faith we've already seen without faith uh, the gifts will not be operational and so i have to build faith 
I need to also eliminate doubt. Uh, will the enemy put doubt in our minds? Any of us who have flowed in the gifts of the spirit, whether it is tongues, whether it is prophecy, anything, I'm sure you have felt like this. Maybe it's not God. Maybe it's me. You know. So the enemy loves to do that. He loves to put doubt in our minds, and he knows if he can do that, he can stop us. Okay. Uh, so eliminate doubt. We have to be uh, accurate in our reasoning and our interpretation. That is there, but you see, these gifts are real, and God is releasing them, uh, and and. We are as a as a body flowing in the gifts of the spirit. Uh, there is no we don't see in the scripture that the flow of the gifts uh, spirit uh, the uh, flow of the gifts of the spirit have stopped. And so the doubts that the enemy puts in our minds that this is not from God or you know all that we must eliminate it. Okay, then yield to what the spirit is saying or doing. So this simply means that when we um, are sensitive to the Holy Spirit, we should allow what God is doing. For example, those of you who have been part of this uh, evenings of prayer, which we are having here at APC, you would uh, have noticed that some evenings, though we have a format, right? Like some part of the service is uh, prayer, uh, worship and then we move into a time of prayer generally it's equal the time limits but the last two days what we are sensing is god is doing something in his presence and thereby the worship moments were longer because we don't want to stop what the spirit is doing he is doing something uh in our in us within us and so, as First Thessalonians 5 verses 19 and 20 says, do not quench the spirit. Quench, in other words, is putting off the way we would extinguish fire. Don't quench the spirit. And it also says, do not despise prophecies. If the Lord is releasing the prophecies, then we don't want to stop. So, the way the spirit of God is moving, the promptings he gives us, we have to flow with it. And in the uh, course on the supernatural, supernatural keys to supernatural ministry, we said that recognizing the flow of the anointing and moving with it is key to seeing uh, greater work. Okay? Uh, that what, what God is doing in our midst. Now, other things here, we should know how to administer the gift properly. So God gives us his gifts, but here is his expectation that we must be good stewards of what he is entrusting us with. So 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, it says this, as each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. I'll move on to verse 11. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. So what does it say? It says, God gives us the gift so that we can minister to one another. We have to be good stewards of what God has given us. And whatever he has given us, according to the ability which he gave us, we should use it uh, in a way that glorifies God and honors God. Then, walk in wisdom. Um, we, we know that zeal, because when you talk about the gifts of the Spirit, there's a lot to do with desire, passion, okay, um, flow. So, Somewhere we may miss wisdom. Zeal is very nice, but zeal without wisdom is dangerous. And that is why we need wisdom. 
when there is operation of the gifts of the spirit we talked about character we talked about renewed mind we talked about being grounded in the word so when all of this is there what we do is we receive the revelation of the holy spirit and then apply our wisdom to it okay so the right manner of interpretation the right manner of communication you know the appropriate way of relating with people so all that is wisdom and um, what happens you know the word becomes useful for somebody they are able to accept what is being spoken apply it in their lives and see the result now if there is no wisdom for example matters of correction you know we've talked about this earlier um let's say god is saying uh, someone needs to uh, let go of their sinful habit now if i go stand at the pulpit and i rebuke that uh, you know some individual in the church that might be the last day that person comes to church is it um you know uh, of is it that i picked up something wrong that my spirit is not sensitive and that is not a prophetic word no i have picked up the right word it is a prophetic word from god but there was no wisdom in the way i minister to that person and so the whole thing is a mess but when i receive from the lord and i apply wisdom to it what happens let's say i meet that person uh, one on one and i talk to them i say hey look this 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 maybe they might be willing to trust us open up and repent of their sin and that person is restored uh, continuing to grow in the lord still part of the church what has happened we have benefited the body okay so here it is being very sensitive prophetically and flowing prophetically and all is beautiful but if we don't apply wisdom we might actually be doing harm to people instead of uh, helping them grow in the lord okay so what can be some of the hindrances uh, of moving in prophecy now before that let me just pause and check whether all of you are awake i am awake <laughs> i'm not uh, very sure because i don't see all of you in person here so yeah how are you all doing are you li still listening yes ma'am <laughs> okay that's good that's really nice so any uh, any thoughts you want to add okay so uh i'm guessing that you're just soaking everything in uh, and hopefully some questions will come later now talking about hindrances to moving in prophecy so let me ask you what do you think can be some things which will stop us from flowing in this gift gift of prophecy um maybe not having much confidence in what we are hearing uh could be one of the hindrances i think i mean sometimes i i receive a word i i'm sure i should go and share with this person i'm kind of very sure it, like i should do this but i stop myself i wonder uh, whether is it really but then i just write it on my note and then after two to three days i gain up the confidence and then i'll go and say that day i received this query but i was not really sure but uh, when they i've seen that uh, it's really from god from their expressions when they say hey, you should have some people used to, you could have told me on that day itself i would have been much more encouraged but thank you for coming there i think one of the things that hinders me as far as i have seen is the this boldness uh to come and speak up and uh, also i think uh, some when i am emotionally weak and if god reveals something i stop myself I'm like even i am not doing good why should i go and reach out to someone uh, so that uh, maybe that kind of insecurity sometimes uh, like when we put our worth depending on us i think that kind of these are two things that stops me most of the time thank you jafina two key things one you said is doubt uh, or lacking confidence 
about whether we really heard from God. That that can stop us. Second is um, uh, a sense of feeling unworthy. That oh, you know how 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 can I go and share this? So these two things hinder us. That's that's very correct. And in fact, uh, I, I'm going to talk about these as well. Um, so. We'll come into the depths of these particular points uh, soon. Uh, I'll just begin to build on, on this uh, by starting with this reality that a lack of proper teaching. OK, so that is the first thing that hinders us. Now, there are many churches where people don't believe in the gifts. In some churches, it's also taught that the gifts are no longer operational. So what happens? immediately? Based on the teaching, you know, our faith begins or it stops there. So those who have been taught their entire lives that no, you know, you cannot flow in the gifts of the spirit. They never even think about it. They never even desire it. And therefore, there's no faith and it doesn't happen. Uh, but in some places, we are, they are taught about the supernatural manifestation of the gifts of the spirit. But here is the challenge. Though they know that this is available, they don't have a proper foundation. Then again, it's a handicap. Like They're not able to uh, use it. Maybe to some extent, they know how to use the gifts. But beyond that, no, they, they cannot use the gifts of the spirit. So teaching, first of all, that these gifts exist. And when you know that these gifts exist, how to how to practice them? That also needs to be taught to the people, uh, and and uh, that's a gap that one must fill. Now, sense of unworthiness. What uh, Jeffina was sharing. We sometimes uh, disqualify ourselves, and we put ourselves down. So we may say things like. Uh, I have not kept my uh, you know, prayer routine, or I'm not holy enough, or I'm not uh, mature enough, I'm not spiritual enough. Uh, and uh, all these flaws, inadequacies, uh, weaknesses are there in me. How can God use me? Okay, uh, And sometimes fear grips our heart. And uh, we say, no, I can't do this. Um, but Here's what the Bible tells us in Romans 8.15, that we have not received a spirit of uh, bondage to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption by which we call God Abba Father. So, uh, you know, even though we are not so-called perfect, we are still God's children. And you know he is our father, and the Bible does talk about grace and forgiveness, and um, you know how in Christ we are now positioned, sanctified, justified, made righteous, made holy, and so my uh, ministry with the gifts of the Spirit must come from that place of being secure in Christ. Am I perfect? Actually, no. I don't know if I'll ever be perfect on this side of, uh, you know, uh, the the earth uh, or existence. But the important thing is that I'm trying with whatever I know. I'm, I'm trying to be as right as I can, and uh, uh, yet, you know, I find my identity in who I am in Christ. So when that happens, the devil may put these thoughts in my mind and say, "Hey, you are not good enough." You're not good enough. How can you prophesy? So uh, 2 Corinthians 3, 5 is a good scripture. Basically, it says, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of uh, anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. So when the devil says, you're not good enough, we say our sufficiency is from God. He has made me sufficient. So. I will flow in this free gift which he has given me. So don't let the devil stop you. You say, my sufficiency is from the Lord. 
and I'm going to go ahead and do what God has called me to do. Now, the next important thing, and this was my biggest challenge, fear of making mistakes. What if I say it wrong? Uh, what if, uh, you know, uh, people don't accept it? What if? So you have all these questions going on within you, and uh, you don't want to make a mistake. Okay. What uh, Will God punish me if I if I you know interpret it wrong well see here is the the thing sometime or the other when we have faith we have to step out of the boat isn't it what did Pete, uh, god tell jesus tell peter come out okay come he said come so it's not that you know we are going to be 100 percent accurate with every prophecy every time See, we are human too, and the most important thing is sincerity. As long as I'm trying to be very sincere about assessing, did I hear from God? What is the correct uh, interpretation of this? Okay, how should I release it in the proper way? When I'm trying my best to be as sincere as I can, sometimes if I make mistakes, trust God to help you overcome those mistakes. Okay. Learn from those mistakes and change, but to stop ourselves from making any mistake, you know, we will never grow. We will never learn. We have to step out of the boat. And uh, even if we think, you know, Jesus is there, like how he gave his a hand to Peter and lifted him up in the same way God will lift us up. So we have to, by faith, take a chance and see how the Lord actually ministers. So I had a lot of fear of being inaccurate in prophecy. And I remember the first time that fear was broken to a large extent. It was one of the weekend schools of prophecy where pastor called, uh, you know, some people, whoever would like to come, just come forward. And uh, uh, you pray. Others who want prayer, you come to these people who are standing and uh, you receive prayer. So one person came to me and uh, I started praying for her. I did not know anything about her. And, uh, you know, she said that, uh, pray for my health. Uh, I have this, this problem. Pray. So I started praying for her. And in my head, I'm thinking God is going to show me something about her healing. But you know what God showed me? God showed me, uh, like, in, in the form of pictures and all, uh, I won't go into the details of it, but something like a broken marriage, and I picked it up. So I prayed for her healing, and then I stopped. And then I very politely, I tried to be as sensitive to her situation as possible. And I said, sister, it seems like you're going through a lot of emotional pain. Uh, are you OK? You know, is everything OK at home? Uh, how, how is family? And then the moment I asked her about family, she just started crying. And I knew that, hey, it's correct. Like, you know, I, I am not good at this prophesying thing. But what I heard from God is so correct. And then she started telling me that there are issues between her and her husband and this and that. And so we prayed about it. So that was when I, I really thought, you know what? I may be very new at this, but it has been a blessing to somebody when I'm sincerely trying to tune into God. So let me do this some more. You know, from that day, slowly my fear started going off and I started taking risks. Okay, come on, let's do this. Hear from God and step out. So fear will keep us bound uh, and it won't let us minister in the gifts of the Spirit. Next is fear of man. You know, we all have something known as reputation. Right, so we don't want to risk risk our reputation. Uh, we feel, oh, what will what will people think if uh, I prophesy? Uh, what will people think if I am, you know, not little little bit of off? Uh, I make a mistake. Well, in uh, Proverbs twenty nine verse twenty five, uh, the Bible says, "The fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe." So. When we are so much about our own reputation, uh, it will not help us grow. Somewhere we have to take a risk again. You know, it's all about taking a risk. Let anybody think anything about me. I'll do my best. 
okay step out step out and then when we see god moving then we gain more confidence but don't get worried or maybe in front of certain people uh we don't want we are getting a word but we don't want to share uh they might judge us don't worry about man and uh, how they evaluate us but be more concerned about being sincere to the word that god has put in our spirit so fear fear of man these are all things that we must counter and of course you know there's that uh, wonderful declaration we can make out of second timothy 1 verse 6 and 7 where we say i have not received the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind okay what else will stop me um, a need for affirmation okay what is the meaning of that you know sometimes when we pray or we prophesy we want a response from the people to uh, let us know that truly god has ministered to them but what if we don't get it for example you know we are praying for somebody we are prophesying over somebody that person doesn't even you know that expression is like a stone like nothing no expression and as soon as you say amen they just go away and you're like did god speak to them did they not speak did god not speak to them but sometimes you have reactions like we tell them and they start crying or they say oh yes sister correct what you're saying is right so we feel affirmed but most of the time we may get a blank response so when we get a blank response it's somewhat unsettling we're not sure oh they're not giving us any feedback now what to do you know what feedback or no feedback the important question to ask is am i being sensitive and sincere with what god has shown me and i'm sure it will bless the other person leave it at that if they come back with the feedback nice if they don't come back with the feedback it's okay continue to use the gift and trust that god will touch hearts okay but when we look only for affirmations it can even move us into um you know it's a very dangerous thing something like uh, we want a good response from people and so somewhere within ourselves we want to release words you know what i mean even if it's not from god so that's very dangerous so we should not get into this whole uh, affirmations getting an affirmation or a pat on the back mood okay next distractions distractions will stop us from hearing accurately from god so what are these distractions if you remember the parable of the sower what did jesus say he said that uh, the cares of this world the deceitfulness of riches uh, right uh, what is one more thing there i'm not getting the uh, thing uh, the distraction but basically he's saying in this world there are many things that can gain our attention so when we have responsibilities troubles uh, you know a lot of stress uh, disturbed in our within ourselves we are under pressure uh, there are a lot of distractions what happens is it that god is not speaking no god is speaking but i am all over the place i am not able to give attention to the voice of god so even in that situation i will miss what is being spoken to me so get rid of the distractions how to get rid of the distractions spend time with the lord you know we we know uh, isaiah 26:3 yeah, isn't it which says that uh, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee so when we keep our minds fixed on the lord we will experience god's peace in our hearts and to prophesy it's very important to quieten the inner man okay and this is not a meditation technique or anything it's not possible actually by just meditating but when you fix your mind on the lord and when you pray because cast your cares on the lord how do we cast our cares on the lord through prayer 
how do we overcome anxiety through prayer we don't worry about anything but submit everything to god you know our petitions with thanksgiving and the peace of god you know that passes all understanding uh, will will guard our hearts so i need to be still i need to experience god's peace then what happens then i can hear then i can listen then i can release so being in that place of calm so you can almost imagine it something like you know the holy spirit is like a dove right uh, and so uh, it is said that a bird like a dove will it's very scared and timid so where there is disturbance it will not it will not sit or settle down so it will only stay on a on a spot that is calm and so if i want to if i want a dove to rest on me i shouldn't move so i have to bring myself to a place of calmness when i do that i am able to hear from god okay so these are the key things that will help us uh, hear from god so we said you know get good teaching uh, know that your worth in christ jesus is uh, gives you the security you need to minister in the gifts of the spirit take risks even though we may end up making some sincere mistakes along the way don't be afraid of people and you know the uh, what they say about us our reputation uh, don't depend on affirmations but depend more on you know what god uh, how god gives feedback to us and distractions avoid distractions so when we do that we are actually able to uh, hear from god so how do we go about uh, prophesying three very very important and simple steps okay so when one wants to prophesy here's what they need to do one is pray pray ask the lord god speak to me give me a word or you may want to say give me a word for this person or give me a word for these people and desire okay now that i've prayed god will give me something to share to these people so pray that's the first one second is perceive perceive means pick it up so where do we pick it up generally we pick up things in our spirit okay and we will talk more about it later so it's like tuning the radio where you just set it to that correct uh, you know channel and then you are able to hear the programs on that channel so when we tune into god or we are perceiving god may choose to speak to us in different ways one is a still sorry a still small inner witness we can describe that as an impression uh, for example we are planning to uh launch a business and when we think about the particular business there is an inner impression of chaos disturbance and you're thinking hey but logically everything looks good i don't know why i'm having this witness <coughs> or this impression but that might be god's way of saying that there are dangers ahead do not proceed or sorry about that everyone please give me a moment yes thank you uh, so i was saying <clears throat> we are sensitive to god and we hear from god or a flash of information could drop into our spirit uh, and we could have a sense of knowing on the inside we could also receive messages through pictures a word a sentence or a paragraph sometimes we would also receive physical sensations meaning 
in the natural you know in our body we may feel like a cold or a, um uh, or, or especially when we are giving a word of knowledge i have sensed this once i was praying for a boy in uh, children's church many years ago and uh, when i was praying for him i could feel like a feather touching my fingers okay and i didn't know how to interpret that but i could feel it so as i'm praying for that boy uh, there there's these feathers touching my fingers so then i asked him hey are you are you good at music do you play the keyboard so i realized that you know he he used to play the keyboard for children's church and today he's all grown up and he's a worship leader and he plays the keyboard you know and i had no clue who he was but you see not always not always only sometimes physically we can have some sensations but we have to recognize that this is a word god is speaking to me and that could mean a message to somebody so i don't know whether he was encouraged or not but i was very encouraged knowing that oh wow you know god is speaking like this to me and i i felt a physical sensation so second thing is perceive first is pray second is perceive third is to prophesy prophesy simply means you release the word to the intended audience in a in an appropriate way okay so we will come back to uh, discussing more about this let me quickly look at uh, <laughs> the questions here on chat okay so divya has answered when i said what can be some hindrances i'm assuming divya that you said not having a community to exercise the prophetic gift that can be a hindrance yeah i agree with you and divya also said that uh, what if the prophetic message is not very pleasant to hear how does one deliver it so wisdom is the answer divya uh we earlier when we talked about the prophetic you know the 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 prophetic ministry we saw the expressions we can either have a prophetic word prophetic power prophetic intercession prophetic song so we need to check maybe that prophetic message is meant to be just an intercession okay so no need to tell that person or if we have to tell that person there are many ways to do it even you know creative expressions that's an option so the way nathan did it right he went to david and he used more like a like a parable a storytelling method so you may want to pick one of those okay does that does that help the via is there anything very specific that uh, you had in mind when you asked this question yeah, uh, yes uh, yes man that helps i was also thinking about how uh, samuel uh, right was uh, giving that message to eli uh, so that is really very uh, you know that too if we consider the age and the position it was really unpleasant but uh, yeah i think he just uh, very candidly said whatever god told him yeah as you said yeah there are creative expressions uh, that we can use that's that's right yeah 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 thank you yeah th thank you divya thank you for that uh, roslyn has something to share as well so she says plus i know a woman who is also my aunt and who flows in prophetic but every time she will address any woman she will always start with uh, i see you are very sad and burdened with some cares and worries and so on and i get upset and later correct her by saying these days mostly everyone is going through some or the other stress or worries so why make the gift of prophetic as a medium to address such a thing 
rather you pray and ask god for that something particular which only she knows yes rosaline i uh, agree with you uh so if it is happening most of the time or all the time uh then maybe it's coming from familiarity as we discussed earlier no uh, life experiences uh, so it's good you know you can encourage your your aunt and say press in press in more so that you get um more deeper words or some something more specific to that person because that will be a greater encouragement now when we say you are going through some struggles it can bring some encouragement but what if i go more specific and uh, say something like you know you are having this challenge at your workplace you are not able to solve this problem but god is giving you the wisdom so what's happening that person recognizes that god knows everything and god is revealing it to an unknown person it it gives a lot more encouragement right so yeah you're correct you can encourage your aunt to press in some more for more appropriate words so uh yes this this is really good uh i think we are getting the you know the essence of uh releasing the prophetic word so what we will do is we will a uh, stop right now and we will come back in the next class and okay uh, in the next class let me take up <clears throat> the next chapter that deals with picking up okay, uh, the word of god through our spiritual senses so hopefully i will complete that um, and then also have a practice session so on our call we will uh, pray for each other and we will release a prophetic word and uh, we'll be blessed by what god is doing uh, so i thought i will end the call now but how about we take some time right now to pray and release the prophetic word i'm sure we all know enough to uh, sense what god is saying so let's uh, pray for a, for a minute okay i'll say a word of prayer and then i encourage you all to pray in the spirit if you hear from god for anyone on the group um, just go ahead write it on the chat or unmute and share heavenly father we thank you for what you have done for us through jesus thank you for his love lord thank you father god for saving us and lord we also thank you for the gift of the holy spirit and lord the manifestation of god of all the spiritual gifts lord we pray in jesus name let it be activated in each of us lord and father we ask for a flow of these gifts lord even right now god i pray that we will hear from you speak to us oh god and lord we pray that hearts will be encouraged lives will be blessed father in jesus name amen amen let's just take about you know half a second or half a uh, minute or up to a minute to just pray in the spirit okay let's let's pray in the spirit and then we will open up to share All right. So, if there's anything that you're sensing, 
please go ahead. You can share. And if anyone uh, recognizes that it's for you, then you can affirm it. Uh, is there anyone here concerned about taking care of a baby? Okay, so that's the picture I got. <clears throat> uh, concerned about care of a baby. So if it applies to you, then I just want to uh, encourage you that you know God will give the grace, uh, the ability, the strength, the favor that you need to be able to take care. So the image I got in my mind is the way Moses, as a little baby, uh, you know, it was a tough time and he was just released. Uh, he was put on the waters, but uh, how God made provision for his own mother later on to go and care for him during his growing up days. So God is faithful. So I just want to share that word. Uh, anyone else, please go ahead. We have a few minutes left. Yeah, so uh, I was just uh, led to pray for uh, everyone over here, and uh, I saw Psalm chapter 140, uh, verse 11 to 13. So the chapter, uh, it's more about the protection of the Lord, uh, when the final verse says that uh, surely the righteous will praise your name and their pride will live before you. Uh, so I just want to uh, encourage if someone... Uh, is feeling little afraid uh, of people or something that they are not very, uh, very much afraid of. They have a sense of fear in them. Just want you to know that um, in Psalm chapter 140, verse 7, it says, O sovereign Lord, my strong deliverer, who shields my head in the day of the battle. So I just felt like. Um, the God will be our protection even when we step out for ministry, uh, even when we step out for the works. Uh, let us not have the spirit of fear, but have the spirit of boldness, knowing that uh, it is God who is protecting us. It is God uh, who is being our strong deliverer. So I would just love to pray for two minutes for all of us. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you under the name of Jesus. I thank you for my class. I thank you for my classmates, all my faculties. And God, I thank you for your words, which says that surely the righteous will live now. We will live, Jesus, even when we have the devil working against us uh, through people or in so many other ways. God, we believe that we will always run to you. We will always believe that you are a strong fortress, Jesus. You will be our deliverer, Lord. Nothing in this life will stop us. Nothing in this life will give us that fear of the people because we don't please them, but we please you, Jesus. We are here to please you, Lord. We trust on you, Jesus. We run into you, Lord. And we believe that you will protect us. You will guide us. I give all my classmates into your hands. Let the spirit of boldness, let the spirit of courage grow in them and let them have this fear in them, Jesus. 
that there's any fear right now. Lord, people are casted out in the name of Jesus. And God, I pray that they will grow strong in your word. They will grow strong knowing that the Lord of heaven's armies is on my side. We give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jafina. Uh, we will wrap up the class with that as well. And uh, let's come back the next class and we will take some time to pray for each other and release words. So during this week, I encourage you, whenever possible, take some time you know, to uh, maybe pray in the spirit, fast if you can, worship. And uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, next uh, next week and what God is going to do in our midst. Thank you once again. God bless you. Your assignments are published. Uh, please work on them and submit on time. Thank you. All the best, everyone. God bless you. Bye-bye.